What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the first episode of a new podcast here on the channel called Haunters Talk. We are a bunch of people who either work in the haunt industry, who cover the haunt industry, um, you name it. We're involved with the haunt industry somehow. Uh, and we, we like to talk geek things. We like to talk things other than haunt. So um, this is going to be one of those podcasts that's like shoot the shit, but we're talking geek things. We're going to talk WandaVision. We're going to talk uh, DC Marvel freaking dark horse image all those comics and whatever whatever geek thing comes to mind we will talk about it so uh with me uh you're gonna be seeing them a lot now on the channel we have mike aka sparrow it's the homie right there he's actually the one who wanted to start this and i was like let's do it i'm in um and then we have our third who we in a week we were given to look for and we found a good third that's justin aka cavities how you doing? Jeez, make, we're actually make talking me feel about like a fucking... that has nothing to do with haunt. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> that's uh, that's fun, right? Um, so yeah. this podcast, like I said, is just gonna talk anything geek. Uh, what we ever, whatever we feel that we want to talk about. Um, that's in the geek world. I mean, a lot of stuff happens on a weekly basis, so we have a good week to pick up some news and talk about it. But since Disney Plus is killing it with their exclusive shows right now, a aka WandaVision, you know, what's coming up next, Falcon Winter Soldier, Loki, all that stuff. Um, we're going to be breaking those down a lot. Uh, much if you guys watch the TLV show that I'm part of, I do that on their channel as well. But we're going to be doing it here, my style, on uh, our cha- on my channel. So um, let's, let's just jump right into it, man. I'm excited. This is going to be a fun episode, good first episode. And uh, we're going to kick things off with... The Immortal Mortal Kombat that's been around for quite some time. Generations of people have played this game. They are releasing a new movie going to theaters and on HBO Max. What are your guys' thoughts on the trailer? What do you guys think? What are you guys hoping for? I want to hear it. We well, hear. I'm actually excited for it. That's actually when I saw it, I was like, oh, dope. Because I, I remember the first Mortal Kombat movie. Ever since then, I don't know if you guys were aware of it. There was actually a YouTube series that actually had some... Um, big name actors in it that was actually pretty cool because i think each episode was like 30 minutes to like 15 to 30 minutes and it was like backstories on each character going up up until the mortal kombat tournament so that was actually pretty cool and then they i don't know where they just like stopped it i'm like fuck that was like the only like sequel to the movie that there was right so now that they're actually coming out with another big cinematic one i'm actually kind of excited for it like, I'm I'm totally excited because like I I feel like the old fogey because like I was around since like the first game dropped and I was mm-hmm. playing at a friend's house because like I wasn't allowed to play it at my own house <laughs> and like when the first movie came out like I remember that was like <clears throat> it was all about like 90s action movies right. and then it was like, the, like I believe if I remember it correctly it's the third video game movie in like cinematic history because like the first one was Mario and the second one was uh, Double Dragon. They did a Far Cry movie back in the day too, didn't they? Right, but I think it was like during that beginning of like, oh, we're we're the big movies people. We're looking for like other stories to tell. Right. And like I remember like as soon as what was it, the boat scene when you saw what was it, Scorpion and Sub Zero roll through that door for the very first time, and you got like freaking literally chills. Right. I was like, this is freaking cool. They're on to something. And, you know, of course, like with the, I think they're on game 13 now. And yeah. what was it, Injustice 2 cameos and stuff like that? Right. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm, it kind of like this new movie, like, re excited me like with Mortal Kombat than ever before because I was like, okay, this one you can definitely tell the director was like, let's get some fans involved. Let's do some backstory and like let's make it like more artful film. So I can't wait. Right. Especially now with this one obviously introducing a new original character named Cole, who's gonna be the main focus around the uh film. Uh he's gonna be inside the actual Mortal Kombat tournament. Um I'm really excited for this man. It's it's promising gore. It's promising uh, a lot more like fighting style, like traditional Mortal Kombat fighting style, which I love. Even at the end of the trailer, what was it? Uh, what was it Kano when he rips the guy's heart out? Was that who it was? <laughs> and he was like uh, Kano wins and all that. Like I, that was like a throwback to obviously when when the guy in Mortal Kombat at the end of every game that you play 
Tells who wins and then fatality and all that. So that was a cool little nod to that. Uh, and I'm I think the biggest question surrounding this that I've seen all week though is where the hell is Johnny Cage? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, he was not in any of these any and at least in this trailer he was not in any and i wonder if they're just gonna maybe if this movie does good they'll bring him into the sequel or he'll have a surprise uh cameo at the end uh, i heard a lot of people also say a good person to play johnny cage uh would be chris evans i think that would be pretty funny <laughs> um, yeah just to see him come out and just kick ass and we already know that guy's ripped his shit from playing captain america and best way I can probably compare his performance as Johnny Cage would be his performance in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Um, something like that would be hilarious, but a little less like, talking like this and, you know, being more like the actor side of things. That'd be pretty funny. But I I'm super stoked for this. I cannot wait. And it's going to be in theaters, HBO Max. I wish I can go see it in theaters, really. Uh, but I'll, I'll settle for it on HBO Max. I'll still watch it. It's going to be good. If they bring Johnny Cage, they have he has to do the split nut check. Right, he does a split nut check. Johnny Cage is he played by Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> he's he's got to do the uh, he's got to do his uh, his picture with his autograph too, and like check right. it out, like a dead body. Like mm -hmm. I have For a finisher. I have a guess though on who I think Cole might be. So I I feel that like Cole is major important, and when. For me, like I was, I was watching it, and I was like, "Oh, his name's Cole. Who do we know that's like related to Cole?" And in my head, I was like, "Could he be possibly Smoke? Like, are they gonna do like an origin of Smoke?" I was like, "That's kind of cool." Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys read this, uh, and this is full blown spoilers for anyone that doesn't want to know. The first like ten minutes is going to focus around Sub Zero and Scorpion. And you're gonna actually see Sub Zero kill Scorpion and how he becomes Scorpion. So I'm I'm really excited for that. So yeah. that should be really cool to kind of see that origin story and that rivalry like before you see him as like Sub Zero and Scorpion. You've only seen the backstories in the game. I think as like Mortal Kombat nine or ten, they really started focusing on that that backstory a little bit more as to like who Sub Zero and Scorpion were. And then you kind of got to see like the little cutscenes of of like them and their and their like early days before they became you know got the powers and everything so i'm super stoked for that if that's how the movie's gonna start like you're gonna kill scorpion off right away and then he'll come back later as like a, the demon that we know so i'm really really stoked for that i like like how like in that little itty bitty cutscene, if you see the two of them fighting yeah that there is actually like you see the ice you see him just throwing um i can't think of it his skewer or whatever you want to say his chain yeah and it's like I don't think he pulled Sub Zero at the end, but like Ray, as soon as like it stops that fight and goes on to the next scene with Kano, um, you hear the "Get over here!" I'm like, "God, oh, yes!" Yeah, I geeked out right there. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm excited, yeah. man. It's gonna it's gonna be a fun film, man. I think it's it's something that since the '90s, um, I, I know a lot of people didn't like that one, and I think this is gonna be a new. I, I'm hoping this movie does good and spawns a franchise of films, but only time will tell. We got to see how the fans react to it. Um, I mean, Wonder Woman 84 looked promising, and look how that ended up. So, <laughs> um, The next thing I want to talk about is obviously uh, the future of both Marvel and DC Cinema. Um, we know that a lot of stuff is happening within the MCU right now, of course, with WandaVision setting up a lot of things for the future of the MCU. We know that DC is on the verge in about half a month of releasing the Snyder Cut which is going to be huge for the for the fans who've been demanding this cut since the original film came out. On top of that, there's talks about David Ayer's cut of uh, Suicide Squad. A lot of fans want that released, and we're, we're all hoping for that cut because there was, much like the Snyder Cut, a lot more footage filmed that we didn't get to see and that was promised in trailers and we never got to see in the final product. Um, and obviously The Flash just started filming. So, I mean, with Flashpoint, we always know that that's DC's cop-out of resetting their universe um, via comics or whatever. Uh, let's let's start on the DC side of things. Obviously, the Snyder Cut is a big thing for fans. They've de been demanding it since 2017. Um, there's been billboards taken out. There's been <laughs> websites started, petitions started. Uh, and finally, it was the summer of last year that Snyder did a live screening, I think, of Man of Steel. 
and he mm. finally announced that he got the okay from Warner Brothers to finish his cut of the film. Uh, he was given it was 20... with uh, Henry Cavill in the fans. Yeah, Henry Cavill did a surprise <laughs> cameo at the end, and he pretty much told him like, "Hey, let the fans know what's going down." And they told him, and the fans went nuts. He was given twenty million dollars to finish his uh, film uh, via CGI and do some reshoots and add some stuff that weren't in the original cut, which I think is going to make a lot of sense and be a lot more cool. Um, I.e., that Joker scene at the end of the trailer. Um, that is the Joker we definitely deserve from Jared Leto right there and I cannot wait to see that um, even though I hear he's only going to be in so much of the film he's going to be like five minutes of the film so maybe that five minutes will spark a lot of fans to be like we want to see more of him as Joker I hope not I hope he's there longer yeah I hope so too I really do but uh, like, it's looking like a nightmare Batman scene is what it's looking well, like well like from for me like how I witness or, or how I'm like viewing DC movies right now is like they're playing catch up, right? And I f- I feel that like DC like EU the DC films and stuff like that are kind of like how when Marvel first started off with the Fantastic Four and with the uh, Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider right. and that idea of like okay we're kind of like going up and down with our movies and stuff like that, like um, testing the water, seeing what people like. Right, like, because, like, now Marvel has everything down pat. There's, like, a blueprint. They they know where they're starting. They're no, they're knowing where they're going. Right. But, like, I feel that DC has been, like, spread amongst people, and they haven't really been able to, like, have start to finish of what, like, a possible blueprint is. Yeah, I, I agree, because I, I know when... DC first kind of set off for the cinematic universe around the time Batman v Superman came out. They did a live stream of kind of releasing their whole slate of movies up until I believe 2023 or 4. And it was a good solid lineup in my opinion. You know, we had, you know, it was Man of Steel, then Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, then it was going to be Wonder Woman, Justice League Part 1. They were going to do a solo Batman film. They were going to do the Flash film. Then they were going to do Justice League Part 2, Cyborg, and then Green Lantern. Oh, no, Aquaman, Cyborg, then Green Lantern. Solid yeah. lineup right there, in my opinion. I was like, okay, do that. Take your time, do it. Like, don't. I, my thing is like, don't play catch up with the competition. Like, take the time to establish a universe. Yeah, you guys, okay, you guys are late in the game. It doesn't matter. Like, just take the time to establish a universe. That way, instead of people saying, oh, they're trying to play catch up, oh, they're on par with Marvel. They they got their shit together. They had something, you know. I, I really wish they would have done that kind of route of taking their time. But instead, it was like when Suicide Squad came out and all these characters got famous, they were kind of like throwing movies. Like, oh, this character's going to get his movie. This character's going to get his movie. Like, you know, they were kind of just doing that. And it's like, if you're going to establish a universe, you got to set out a plan, follow through with that plan, and make people wait for, like, solo character movies or something because that's going to make people want more and come back to your product, I, I think, personally. Well, cause, like, I, I felt that, like, I mean, when Suicide Squad was, like, in the very beginning, like when it was like just getting like what is it teas and all that stuff, like they DC has this thing of like they'll put a scene out there, right? And they won't go back to it, you know. Like I remember Amanda Waller is like at the very end of Suicide Squad, she gives like the uh, like the huge packet of all the folders of like the metahumans and uh, all the uh, like I would love to say. Is like heroes and villains, right? But like, and she gives it to to not only Bruce Wayne, who's Bruce Wayne, you right. know. It's just like I'm like, okay, are we gonna go back to that? And then there was the scene where Flash is doing the um, is saving uh, the bank heist that's going on with Captain Boomerang, and I was just like, this is a time to bring out a Flash film and to kind of like. I wouldn't say copy the Marvel way, but I'm like, if you want to get, you know, your bucks going in, you got to throw in that fan service and get back into it. So it's like they did a whole bunch of scenes that like, we're going to throw this scene in there. It's kind of a fan thing, but we won't go back in the future. I'm just like, come on, guys. Yeah. Well, it's also like with the Dark Knight series, they did the three movies. And at the end of the third one, they teased Robin into it and then didn't continue with and then they started off with Suicide Squad. Right. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, with Nolan's films, uh his trilogy, yeah, you're right. He they teased the Robin come up and then like, nothing ever Yeah, they teased them right at the end. 
he goes into the back cave and it's just like and it's like really and this is it no continuation of like robin or even like uh nightwing or well right. they can't do red hood but but yeah it was like it could have went continued but all different right? i know they wanted to end that franchise yeah and, and not to mention like i feel that there's like a lot of things that dc does and it's mm-hmm. like we need further exclamation like as like viewers watching it. you know it's like one of the examples is like with marvel they threw in the cosmic cube the tesseract mm-hmm. and it's like they built so far everything from the tesseract right going you know and it's just like there were scenes in correct me if I'm wrong Batman v Superman where you see Bruce Wayne Manor for the first time and it's exploded it's in disarray yeah. like the fields are like it looks like there was no gardening going on for like 10 to 15 years and I'm like this is the Wayne Manor what happened yeah. you know like so many like what happened like Bruce Wayne walks by the the Robin suit and sees the spray painted "ha ha jokes on you, Batman," mm-hmm. and I'm like, "What happened? We want to know these things." It's like, and that's obvious too. That's like, okay, Jason Todd, or like, okay, right. we know Joker killed him, so I want to see that now. You know? Exactly. And, now, like, and then exactly. going into that, you're like, "Is Red Hood coming? Yeah, is Red Hood coming? Right. No, it's just a matter like, of that. There's, there's so many like what I'd like to call like blue ball moments. Dude, yeah. Uh, let me tell you yeah. the biggest blue ball moment that pisses me off to this day. The ending of Justice League. Big round table. We give uh, ten, 10 chairs. I'm like, <laughs> Hall of Justice, let's do this. And then they're like, yeah, we're not doing that. I was like, thanks for getting my hopes up for nothing. Appreciate but it was, it was also one of the, yeah. I was like, if the film was better, it would have been great. Like, you I know, feel like, like the- it was way too rushed, though. It was just like that's the and that's the that's the argument about the Snyder cut is the reason why Justice League in 2017 came out the way it did was one obviously Snyder had personal things to deal with with yeah of course, unfortunately you know, you know his stepdaughter or was it his daughter or stepdaughter I can't remember stepdaughter stepdaughter right uh, so he had personal things to deal with that so he was you know taking care of his family first uh, I mean it's like his his stepdaughter was practically like his daughter right. He's he's been in there since like I think she was like born. Right. Um. So you know he had a lot of personal things to deal with on that. So like I was like, all right, you know, you got to deal with that, man. That's that's pretty that's pretty damn important. Like take care of your family, man. So they the, like DC didn't want to wait, so they rushed. They brought in uh, he who should not be named, and he finished the he he finished the uh, the project, uh, and it was rushed. What 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 Justice League essentially was was. Let's put this out in before Infinity War so we could try to compete with them. And the final product wasn't great. Um, there was a lot of reshoots. Pretty much the entire movie was reshot. Uh, from what I'm hearing, Snyder said that only like 30 or 45 minutes of his footage has been shown in Justice League. So a lot of reshoots to do with that. And Snyder had way more filmed and way more ahead of the game. So... I, I, you know, if we're, if we're getting like a four hour film, I'm curious to see what we're going to see in this cut and what was essentially supposed to be the real Justice League. You know what I mean? Because what did they release I, first? Justice League or Aquaman? Justice League. Justice League. Awesome. So like, even when, like when it comes to it, I definitely feel like Aquaman should have been released first. Right. Before going into that, just because I don't know where you're like, all right, who's this guy? And then you're like, all right, no, this is Aquaman for sure. And then I think it was like what a year later then we got the Aquaman movie. Right. Putting a little bit more of a backstory to it. Because right there they tried giving him a little backstory, but it was just like all right, here's Aquaman and now into the fight scene. Like, just like I with feel that like they were trying to not be like the Marvel way, but like at I mean, I hate going back to Marvel, but like they made a like from my opinion, like a solid like what's going down. We don't really I mean, we'll get to the next subject in a little bit. Like, there's there's very few mysteries that go down with Marvel movies because whenever like there's the post credit scene, the next movie will 
pick up from the post credits and things right. go on from or there. Or something, and, not even the next movie, something for a future bigger storyline that they're they're trying to build. Right, will be involved. And it's like that. for for us with the Marvel like method of stuff like that, everything is kind of like lined on where it's like, all right, just hang in, we'll get there. But with yeah. like with the Justice League, it was just like, all right. We're, we're throwing this guy in, we're throwing that guy in, and this was with the, the he who shall not be named cut. And the studio, I would like to say it's like the studio and that director's name cut. And it was just like very slapdash. If I, it, as like, if I can find like a better... And I like, think that. that's what DC's biggest problem is right now, is the studio has a lot of interference with... Yeah. what they do as far as films. If you look at Marvel, Kevin Feige uh, essentially and his team have a big storyline set out. Like, okay, this is where we're going to start. This is where we have to get. He go, But every director he brings on gives them the creative freedom to pretty much build around this story. So, like, Kevin Feige probably tells the guy, okay, you got to include this, this, and this, but you have as much freedom as to do what you want with this film. And I think that's what makes those films so good. Uh, I.e., I think Guardians of the Galaxy is one of probably MCU's greatest films because they gave James Gunn the freedom to do what he wanted to do. Um, Dude, like, when... <laughs> I remember, like, that's one of the examples that, like, my, f- my shoe was in my mouth. Like, when at Comic-Con 2000, I think it was, like, 12, when, when they were like, oh, we're doing Guardians of the Galaxy... And I was the biggest like shit talker of that movie because I was like, I'm like, really, you're gonna do a talking stick? You're gonna do a raccoon? Like you're gonna do all of these characters that no one gives a crap about? Right. You know, like I don't even give a crap about these people. Like it's barely selling off of the shelves at at like the at that time. Right. At stores, you know, and it was like I think like they had like a cameo appearance on like the Spider Man. Um, what was it the spectacular spider-man tv show thing right. with uh, what face that does the voice of it um, and i was just like i'm like do you really think people are going to give a crap about the guardians and then i was just like i saw the movie and i was just like i, I was wrong <laughs> one I disney was wrong. one disneyland attraction yeah. later <laughs> right and i was just like i'm like i you know it that was one of those things where like i was like okay We'll see where it goes. You got Vin Diesel being a stick. You got Bradley Cooper, which at that time was like Mr. Academy Award winner, you know, like one of the best actors. Like, I mean, still, see, still I, I was the other way around. I was like, how the hell are you going to get the guy from The Hangover to play a freaking raccoon? I was right. like, this guy's too damn funny. And I'm like, you got Vin Diesel playing a stick. Like, what? And he only has one, like, sentence that he does. I'm like, how are you guys going to pull this off? Like, it's not going to pass. And I was just like, oh, they did it. Yeah. They, 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 they no, did it. I think my dad was on well, the same thing. Well, technically, he had two lines. He goes from I am Groot to we are Groot. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, my dad was on the same thing because my dad cannot stand talking animal characters at all. He makes a few exceptions for a few. Like he likes Rocket now because they explained his backstory a little bit in Guardians One, and he mm-hmm. liked the way that that was explained. He loves Beta Ray Bill, but in a way he's kind of a different. In a way he's something different. So I mean, but he really mm-hmm. likes Beta Ray Bill, um, but he can't stand like Howard the Duck. He can't stand that character. Um, <laughs> and I think they made him pretty freaking funny in the Guardians cameo that he had. But like, oh, yeah. if you're talking about like the 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 movie they did back in like the '90s, then yeah, we have a problem with that right there. Yeah. Um, but no, it's like you know, back to like the DC things so too. Like you're talking earlier, you were talking about scenes that don't lead to nowhere. Let's. What about the post credit scene of Justice League? We set up the Legion of Doom for crying out loud. Like that was supposed to be something big that was going to be coming next. And um, <laughs> DC, it's been like five years now, and I'm still waiting for that. Like. Like where where's Legion, dude? Yeah, like, you know, and like I I get I like, just like I just feel like when it comes to DC, they just put way too many ideas out there, and then it's on the chopping block the next week. I am like, very glad the studio had no interference with James Gunn's Suicide Squad movie, and I think he had probably put in a contract, I will do this movie, but no one interferes in it. It's my way or I'm walking. And that's the mm-hmm. way that it needs to be. Like, yeah. and 
I was actually watched like some of like the trailers and stuff like of behind the scenes filming, and it, so far it looks like it's going to be definitely like a good movie. Definitely excited for it to come out. Right. Kind of upset that they changed some of the characters. But, like, no. but that's but, the fun thing about Suicide Squad is it's never the same set of characters. It's always a rotating uh, slate yeah. of characters. But the thing I like about James Gunn, much like how you brought up with Guardians, these were no- Guardians were nobody characters, and now they're a household name. James right. Gunn is is being very ballsy with Suicide Squad. He picked nobody characters in the DC universe, and look at this. There's already a Peacemaker show being made right now, and that movie hasn't I mean, even came out yet. Like, honestly, like, if it wasn't for, you know, Grogu right now, right. everybody would still have a fucking group everywhere. Yep. <laughs> like group became like a freaking you know like phenomenon it became like almost like up to me else like character standards right i remember i had a group t-shirt i had a group fucking like little figure and stuff like that and i was just like everybody wanted a baby group once you got like uh-huh. baby and everything and then working at disneyland like literally at space nine You'd be telling people, hey, you might want to take that off. Hey, you might want to take that off. Right, yeah, yeah. When you're beer at that yeah, bar, the you're like groups. checking the lap bars and be like, hey, you might want to take that off. Like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And it'll take it outside because like, we ain't stopping the ride to grab this from outside. <laughs> so it's like, we're telling them, like, hey, eh, take that and off. I remember, like, that I remember I was like, I was, I was, a, I was a mad hater of Guardians because I was just like, you mean you're going to get Andy Dwyer from Parks and Rec to be Star Lord? Like, mm-hmm. are you kidding me? Really? And I, oh. and I think it was actually one of the interviews where he said, "Damn it, I wish I was uh, Rocket instead." He's like, "If I could choose anybody, it was gonna be Rocket." Right. But they told me to be this dude. I'm like, "All right, he's a gunslinger. Okay, I'll give it a shot." And then next thing you know, and uh, saw it, like watching his workout process to get from Chunky Parks and Rec right, to yeah. for the. The X-ray scene where they're well, what was it? Uh, yeah, like it was like the them. teaser, the teaser scene, like uh, there he's getting like what is it like deloused and everything, right? And yeah, disinfected and guns him, all pointing like, at him. Is that his real body? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, look a little CGI if you ask me, but uh, I was like, I was like, oh dang, Andy Dwyer uh, is cut now, man. <laughs> like dang. the the thing I liked about it though is if you if you read anything Guardians prior to watching that film, they were a pretty serious group. Like, they really didn't... There wasn't too many jokes in the books. There wasn't, you know, a lot going on. James Gunn kind of flipped the gun on that. Like, mm-hmm. he really made them a funny-ass group, and the movies are hilarious now. Um, James Gunn is also very famous, and this is why I'm excited for Suicide Squad. He's famous for putting good music in his films. And I cannot wait mm-hmm. to see what he adds in Suicide Squad, especially if it's... It, he described it as, like, a... A Vietnam, like present day Vietnam mission in a way, which sure. I thought was really cool. So I was like, oh man, I got a million songs in my head that I can fucking put in this movie already if it's going to be that which, kind of style. Which is prime example, um, you know, going back to DC, they tried to do that in Suicide Squad and everybody was like, what are you guys doing? Copying Guardians? Yeah. Like, like they tried doing like all that stuff in Suicide Squad and we were like, that worked for that movie. It's not working for this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. when they played Bohemian Rhapsody at the end. I was losing my shit because I love that song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just like, I was like, well, it's working for that film. Why are you trying to copy that method? You know, like. like leave that to James Gunn. Let him, he does that. Not anyone else. He does it. And Tarantino. Right. Um, I, I think I, I'm hoping that Suicide Squad. Alexa, and the, turn the TV off. And The Flash really turn this universe around i think if they see how good suicide squad's gonna do they'll maybe open their eyes to give their directors and producers and writers more creative freedom to make the movies how they want to do it as long as they stay within a certain storyline um and it also for me it gives another uh, which i think is a who's plays this role phenomenally is uh margot robbie we get to see her showcase as harley quinn again I really, mm-hmm. after watching her in Suicide Squad, can't see anyone else playing that role anymore. I mean, she is Harley Quinn. Like, she it, it was born for that role. And I hope that... It's like, right as soon as that movie came out, everyone all of a sudden had a, a Harley Quinn outfit. <laughs> they had a, either had the shirt uh, yeah. or the freaking bat. That was all I remembered. Or they dyed their hair the colors. like. Um, or they had the red and blue booty shorts. Like, you know, it's just like, you got to put some clothes on. <laughs> 
I uh, no, but I I'm a fan of cosplay, so I was I, I would always go to the conventions and I would like to see who had the best one, who was the most spot on with it, and it was really cool to see everyone get creative about it. Um, I think that's one of the things I miss most about it is going to conventions, just watching everybody cosplay. Like, you know, I can care less if I see pounds or anything. I just like watching everybody cosplay. And then if you see someone you really like, like you're walking up and down the aisles all of a sudden, hey, there's that guy that I liked from earlier. Um, but no, I I think Harley Quinn, especially with this one, I mean. Every adaptation of Harley Quinn, I've seen some good cosplays of. You know, with mm-hmm. Suicide Squad, everyone did that one. Uh, Birds of Prey, I saw a few people do some Birds of Prey stuff, which looked really good. Um, and this costume that she's rocking in the new Suicide Squad film looks freaking phenomenal. So I can't wait to see people cosplay with that. Like finally, it's uh, we get her the. I mean, for me, I'm like, it's okay to show skin right. if it's functional. And I was like, finally, we're getting the Harley Quinn with the leather like tactical outfit, like yeah. The- Harley Quinn. It's like, giving me some, honestly, if I can say it, it's giving me some Arkham Arkham Asylum vibes. Right? Yeah. I couldn't agree with you even further because, like, when, when Bree saw the uh, the footage that they released, I believe it was, uh, what was it, the, the DC Con fandom thing? Like, we saw the trailer and we're like, finally, they gave her, like, the tactical outfit. Like, this is cool. Like, it makes sense that she has, you know, this and this. Um, but like also, I, speaking on someone who does really good cosplays right there, I'm just saying I can't wait to see what she if she's gonna do that. I can't wait to see what she comes up with. Oh yeah, she's one. got she's got a couple thing up her sleeve like yeah. with with that in the future. Um, I feel that like Margot Robbie is like the equivalent of like Robert Downey Jr. to Iron Man. Yeah, exactly. She loves the role, and I I think she's an executive producer of Birds of Prey and Suicide Squad. Like I think. I think she's going to love this character for as long as, like, the people will let her, Yeah, you know? And, like, I don't think she's going anywhere. Yeah, as long as you can get a good... Because I know Harley Quinn, a character that was kind of really first introduced in the animated series, it's a really hard character to kind of... I mean, you can give her solo films, you can do this, but it's just... It's it's it comes the challenge is how can we introduce this character and make her still a good story and everything? I think if you if you have the right story and the right team up, I I would say Suicide Squad works best with her because she is a known member who has always been on the Suicide Squad slates that I've seen the most out of any other supervillain. Um, I e like you know they're making that Justice League kill or Suicide Squad kills the Justice League video game and she's on the slate of the Suicide Squad for that. So. Harley Quinn, since her debut, has blown up a ton. Um, she has become more popular now than she ever has. Uh, and I think a lot of people really like that that Harley Quinn Joker kind of team up. I mean, I, I, I remember, like I, I showed uh, Sparrow before we went on live. I have actually the Alex Ross poster of uh, Joker and Harley Quinn dancing together, which I think is probably the best picture of them two ever. Um, Sparrow, mm-hmm. right there, giving you some cosplay ideas. You might want to recreate that. Um, I'll try. There you go. Try your best. You know, whatever. I gotta get the the dad bod gone. There you go. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, I, I think that there. was cool in Suicide Squad when they referenced that for a second. Because I remember watching the film, I was like, "Oh my god, they actually did it!" Like that was really cool. But I don't know, man. I, I think I, I I digress. Another scene that was given to us in a DC film, right? That like okay we're seeing this now what happened right now i'm like yeah uh but i think i I think with flash the upcoming flash movie starts filming it's already started filming so that's looking good uh and i cannot wait for that one i'm a huge fan of the flashpoint storyline i think it's a, a one of the best uh dc stories out there too as well um i'm a little concerned about i know cyborg has a major role in the comic book but we do know that Ray Fisher will not be a part of this project. Um, so I'm a little concerned how they're going to get past that. So we'll see what happens with that. But it's Honestly, like, if DC is learning from their mistakes, and I know it costs a lot to make a movie, but, like, if you're going to take away an important role, you should just end the film. Yeah. Like, and, and do a different story like it's just people like i i think now a lot of people are like really nitpicky on things and like if you if you change this up or change that up like you're gonna not hear the the end of it of right. like the reviews and stuff like that so like my whole thing is like if you're gonna not 
if you're going to do Flashpoint and then not do Flashpoint 100%, I would just want to do it in general because yeah. you could do so many other films, you know, and introduce so many other people, right. you know. But, I mean, obviously I don't work for the studio, so. I'm curious to see if they're going to have a reverse Flash in there. I have heard no news on that. Um, right. And that's another major character who's... Was it the, the rumors of uh, Matthew McConaughey possibly being... Oh, man. I would... You know what? I would be for that because I like me the McConaughey, so... He goes, hey, right, Barry, right. it's me, Reverse Flash. How you doing, buddy? All right, all right, all right. I'm I remember, I remember seeing those rumors circulating like a few years back, and I was like, okay, I can see that. <laughs> He's about Barry. I'm going to go kill your mom now. All righty. <laughs> um, no, I, that would be really cool to see that, though. I could see McConaughey. I mean, I, I – okay, uncontroversial topic right here because uh, – I get a, I hear a lot of heat from this film. I was a fan of The Dark Tower. I was. I thought it was a decent movie. Um, never watched it. You never watched it? I haven't I haven't seen it because like I I heard how bad it was and I was I was like, "All right, so should I give it a try?" and someone was like, "Don't even do it." I <laughs> thought it was I thought it wasn't too bad because I liked McConaughey as he was an evil role. He was like <clears throat> Stephen King's pretty much his version of the devil. And he was just evil. He was. Like, there were scenes where he actually kills kids. And I was like, that's fucking evil. Like, I would never <laughs> see you do that ever. <laughs> and the fact that you did that, I was like, I remember you being this stoner guy and Daisy Confused. Now you're over here being the devil. It's like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a very uh, twist of uh, fate right there. But uh, him as a, a villain role, uh, I don't think we see enough of. And I think he can pull it off. No problem. You know, we also have... Michael Keaton coming back as Batman, which has been on everyone's mind for like since the '90s. We've wanted to see it, um, and that's going to be cool. But I'm a little confused because Ben Affleck's Batman is going to be there. And if anybody knows the story of Flashpoint, when he goes back to the alternate universe, it's Thomas Wayne's Batman uh, mm -hmm. that we see because instead of Bruce Wayne's Bruce Wayne's parents dying, we, Bru Bruce we see dies. Bruce Wayne die, and his mom and his dad become Batman and Joker. So yeah. I'm curious to see how they're going to pull this off. If they from, got a surprise with Jeffrey Dean Morgan coming back, I would love to see him as Thomas Wayne Batman. But I could see. From like the rumors were circulating, like we get to see realms oh. open up. So, like, I think, what was it, The Flash Falls? Like, when, she, when The Flash is trying to go back in time, um, I think he's not doing it properly and he falls into like another realm. And that's when we see um, the Michael Keaton Batman. So like, and that's when he like learns like, oh, I can go in different multiverses. And There's another thing if you want to bring up things correct. that never came back was when freaking Barry goes and visits his dad in jail. <laughs> like, okay, right. I want to see how he got. I mean, I obviously know how he got there, but I would love to see it on film. You know, it's like um, any Flash fan knows how that happened, but you know, it's like. But anyway, DC. I'm just saying you need your boy right here to step in because I can clean it up real good and I can set you guys on track to be a freaking successful company. You just I just wish there was like a committee, over. you know, like I wish there was like either like a poll online type committee and, and be like, okay, we're thinking about doing this and having like the voting be like, no, <laughs> like don't do it. Yeah. Like do this. I'm you know? just saying I've had a plan for DC for so long that I just literally want to go down to their corporate office and be like, y'all are fucking up. After all these movies that you film, let's clean the slate. I'm going to start you guys and set you guys on track. And don't fucking change it if a character becomes popular. Well, End and then <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, like I felt like things were on the right track. And I was getting excited during Christmas time because I was like, ooh, not only do we have Christmas, but at like, what was it, 11 o'clock, we get to watch Wonder Woman 84. Right. And then like, I'm not, well, being a new parent, I fell asleep halfway through the movie. And then You didn't miss much. <laughs> right. And then I woke up and like I basically saw like the, the cameo at the very end. Oh, and wow. I was confused when I woke up because I was like, Okay, cool, you're here. Yeah. What's going on. You know, and then I was like and then it was like end the film. And so like that following night, Christmas night, was like we were all done and I was like, All right, cool, I'm on I'm on dad night duty. So I finally gave it a watch. And when I watched all of it, because, like, he was sleeping, the baby was sleeping, I was, like, full, like, me in the in the movie zone, you know? Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm watching it. 
And I was just like, this is what happened? How do you go from Wonder Woman, the first movie, yeah, which was so good, to this? And I was just like, I was like, man, you're, it's like, to me, I feel like, and, you know, I, I do give it credit because DC is now with HBO Max and they're not fully run by Warner Brothers anymore. But I feel that right now DC is still playing catch up. It's always like kind of like a two step forward, three step backward right. type thing when it comes to like the movie. And then there's like, there's some films that come out. Like um, I'm going to give an example, like Aquaman came out and Shazam came out or Captain Marvel or they didn't want to, you know, Shazam, see Superman cameo. What happens after that? <laughs> right. And I was just like, I'm like, those two films were amazing films like the Aquaman one and Shazam <laughs> was just like, I was like, what, what the hell? Like, dude, how are I, was, these? I was surprised of how good Shazam was, to be honest. Right. I thought it, the trailers made it set up like it was going to be a bomb, but I was still going to watch it. And then like, I remember like they did a month before the film came out, they did a couple early screenings around and I got to, I got tickets to go to one of them. Um, That's dope. By the way, they were just selling those tickets. Like it, you wouldn't have to sign up for anything. Or anything. Like they were literally like just doing like a month early screening to them and if you just happen to get tickets for them and buy them then you did it so me and a bunch of my friends went and i walked out of that theater like oh my god that was so much better than i thought it was going to be this is dc this is where you need to go right and i felt like shazam was like i haven't watched it yet. Oh, it's good to me to me i feel like shazam was like a stretch right that they were like kind of going in that like guardians of the galaxy mode right or like, let's let's give it to someone who's a fan like a, the director and like let, let's have them take it to a place that we haven't gone before and see what happens and they rolled the dice and it was like really good and for me watching it i'm like i'm thinking to myself i was like how is shazam and aquaman their best seller out of like batman and at that time it was batman and superman right and suicide squad i'm like how did these guys beat these guys? Yeah. You know, like, and I, I was like, you know, I mean, but I mean, you know, that's how I feel about DC. It's like three steps forward, two steps back, you know, and like they're trying and trying, you know, but I mean, that's how I feel about DC. In Same general. thing with like Joker. When I watched Joker, I was like, okay, um, I see what you guys are trying to do here. You guys are trying to do Elseworlds movies. But like, that don't I mean, entwine. It, that's, like, like Joker, I, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I'm not talking shit on Joker. I thought that movie was well, fucking phenomenal. For, for me, like me and me and Bree, we watched Joker, and once it was all done, it was all wrapped up. Like you know, the trailer was going on, and I was just like, I see the reason why it was created, but for me, if I was like DC, I was like, we're not gonna go Joaquin Phoenix. We're gonna give this movie to Jared Leto because. He's in the universe. Why would you create yeah. their Joker? And I, I feel like it was like they stepped on the shoes of what's already being created. Right. I was like, this would have been perfect for the haters of Jared Leto and this and that. Like, he has his own movie. You know, like, I I felt bad because I, I loved the Joker. Like, I, I loved how it went, how it ended, and how, it, like, it was, like, the origin story and i was just like where was this film right. like i was like and i was i was like okay so we get this film and that's it like i was just i was like this was a treat it was yeah. such a like, good art film but i'm like they should have just gave it to jared leto well i mean and also with this movie too i mean todd phillips directed it who lately has been killing it in the game i mean going from comedy to like serious things um you know, he, if you, I mean, if you pay attention to the beginning of the film, you never actually see the DC logo ever. It just goes to like Warner Brothers and then goes right into the fucking film. Like, you don't right, see yeah. the DC logo. So, like, I think his initial plan was he wanted to make a movie that was like that. But when Warner Brothers apportioned, they're like, well, we're working on a Joker film. How about you just kind of base your original ideas and put the Joker in it? So, <laughs> he kind of probably had an idea for a movie that was supposed to be like that. And then Warner Brothers was like, well, let's just make it a Joker film. And then we can include this character of the Joker, which is belovedly loved, you know, everywhere. 
Um, I would say it's probably one of the top five well-known villains of all time. Um, and so I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess that's why he kind of really tried to further himself from DC, Todd Phillips. He really wanted to make a movie that was centered around, like, this character who was kind of, you know, schizophrenic and all that stuff, but then had more to it, and then DC was just like, well, just make a fucking Joker movie. But I get where well, you're coming me, from. I was like, why why, what, why, would you start a new Joker film if you have... Like, for me, because, like, I mean, you know, we, we saw Justice League, and then we saw the post credits, and they were like, all right, Legion of June. And then they bring out a Joker film. And I'm like, it would have been cool if they did Joker, Deathstroke, Lex Luthor, you know, you know, and Cheetah. Like, yeah, and be like, all right, now we're getting origin stories. The Legion of Doom is coming. Yeah. You know, and, and I was just like, okay, here's this random Joker. And then in a recent interview, Todd Phillips said, like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to do any other ones. And I was just like, then why? What My was whole thing, too, is like, okay. We have Pattinson's Batman in the works, mm-hmm. you know, another Batman movie. It's like, I so badly now want to see his Batman, even though I've not seen the film yet. I just, I, I have a gut feeling that that actually might be a good one. Cause I really do like Matt Reeves's work. Um, I want to see his Batman with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker now. And I the fact like that I, be slam dunk. the fact that we probably won't even get that. Cause Matt Reeves looking like he might already have a trilogy planned out for this Batman universe. If it does good kind of pisses me off but i did like how matt reeves is using um penguin and riddler as his villains because i feel like those are two characters that yeah we've seen in the tim burton universe you know an adaptation of them but we haven't seen a really solid live action film with two you know i mean riddler yeah people make fun of him because of his question marks and everything and his riddles but if you if you cast him right if you do him right he could be a very sadistic character and I'm excited oh, yeah. to see and what then, Matt Reeves does with that. I mean, if you if you don't know the uh, like the hush, yeah, you know, like there's so much in depth of uh, Riddler that it goes on in the future where you're just like, okay. And then for me, like the best one of the best people to portray um, Riddler um, was from Gotham, the right? TV. And I was like, okay, cool. We actually give a crap about this uh, secondary, you know, villain. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's my like bubble of dc <laughs> like, I, no i feel the same way man i think there's a lot like especially with batman batman has so many great villains i think he's got hands down the best rogues gallery in dc to this day um and then spider-man has the best rogues galaxy in marvel so right with with batman you know i, I want to see a villain i want to see a a, a a serious adaptation of mr freeze i think you can make a sick film with that you know, if you cast someone right, like if you see anything within the games, if you cast that right, it would be beautiful. Oh um, yeah, and then you'll you'll feel for the you'll feel for um your feet. And like you'll you'll know the reason why he is the way he is. And, right. Uh, and you might even shed a tear or two. Well I like I was even feeling for him like if you played the Arkham Knight DLC when when yeah. they have him on the boat like you feel like legit sorry for him because all he wanted to do was have his his wife with him and then when was his it wife called the uh, cold cold heart yeah <laughs> and then when his wife comes back it's like it's Ooh. like she's like i don't want to this is not how i want to live like you've done too much bad shit just to get me back and this is not how i want to live and then he's right. like he's like hurt by that you can like you feel that as a player you're like oh dude like he's worked his entire life to get her back and now he got her back she doesn't want to be back so he just me, I was like that's that's perfect example i was just like and another thing where i'm like i'm like well you already did successful video games from it why don't you model movies from it? that's the same thing like their animation their video games fucking amazing choice what is wrong with the movies i mean what's wrong with taking a comic book or like even your animated what is wrong with getting your animated writers and making a fucking movie like what i what what's the deal the the hardest part is going to be casting people to look like your characters but other than that if you have a great story you can roll with that shit hell still one of my favorite bat suits yeah and and it's and it's a video game bat suit yeah so i mean dc if you're watching like i played I those you, those yeah. were actually pretty fun those are good uh, underrated one by the way arkham origins i think that's one of the best ones um i have yet to play that one that's a uh, cool. that's awesome it's like year one batman in a way um i've always hated all the fucking riddler challenges on all the games excuse my french because the riddler challenges if you do not cuss, bro come on well, if you don't do any of those fucking regular challenges on the fucking tee, 
if you I, don't uh, do them like literally on the t you it doesn't pass like it does there's no grades just like there's one where you had to use a batmobile and shoot all the freaking question marks yeah yeah you miss it by one fucking second Bink, my fuck yep it literally it took me three <laughs> fucking days to do it and it was pissing me off Arkham Knight was the first game where I completed every Riddler challenge too, mm. and then when they remastered them, I uh, are you in a fucking quesadilla? <laughs> okay. Um. Anyway. It's a salad too. Uh, it's a salad quesadilla. All right, even better. Um. Can I have a bite? A little cold though. Just get it through the Zoom call. Um, yeah, that's messed up. But then when when they remastered the arkham games return to arkham for like the next gen consoles of course my ass bottom again because i was like i'm replaying these games because they're fucking phenomenal and i love them all um and mm-hmm. i and i complete all the regular challenges for that i just gotta do arkham origins but i have yet to find it i had it on playstation now and then like i unsubscribed to that i gotta resubscribe to that just so i can play that but dc final word on the subject get your shit together us fans are tired of it we want to see you guys succeed and it's hard to defend a company when you guys always are releasing something that's a disappointment. So so one thing that when it comes to DC for their live action, they just they never have been able to nail it on the T, never been able to hit it on the head. But when it comes to their cartoon versions, the animation ones, I've literally watched all the Batman ones, all the Justice League ones, the movies where they're like rated R. Right. And they're fucking phenomenal. They're awesome. They're good. They put a little bit more detail into the characters. Just like Son of Batman. That one had great detail into it. Just like all of them had for their animated ones were awesome. But they never really oh, tried like, putting you, all that you into it. Batman was dope. I have yet I to watch that, that one. Yet. That one's cool. <laughs> um, I liked how they kind of just dropped out of nowhere at the end of, I think it was like Justice League apocalypse or something like that i forget one of the last animated movies are like yeah this was all tied in for a 10-year universe i'm like how how the hell did you guys organize a amazing animated cinematic universe better than your live action right you did that with 10 years without us even knowing like we knew some of the movies were connected but at the end you're like yeah everything prior to this flashpoint was connected i was like i didn't know that and i was loving every movie that you released why come you can't do that with live action so right um, Even they did a great job with Constantine, yeah. and all their fucking movies were horrible with Constantine, and that one was like, hey like, man, Keanu Reeves Constantine fucking slaps, all right? That one was good. I ain't gonna lie, I do like that one, but that one it doesn't have the DC Universe logo on it either. Yeah, there's True. talks of a, a second part of that coming out with Keanu again too. So I was like, bring it. I hope so, because yeah. like what after if- Johnny Silverhand, come on, bring me that freaking more Keanu. Um, it was, and that was in the era of uh, pre. Um, what is it? What's the What's the Keanu Reeves movie that he's like popular now? It's the Hitman. Oh, John Wick. Yeah, that was pre John Wick too. That was yeah. when like Keanu was getting back like on, in the style again. Everybody's like, oh, hey, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I watch anything Keanu Reeves in, whether it's a, a freaking. Uh, chick flick, anything. I'll watch it with him. I don't care. It's Keanu. Or, uh, tumbleweed and yeah. SpongeBob. Yep, I'll I'll watch it. <laughs> um